All right, so we're back to um, learning about trees, and we're back in the uh, NIOF book. We're going to cover sections 15.1 today and 15.2 on Thursday. Now, this is kind of a cool section, this 15.1. I like this section a lot. Something called Huffman Codes, okay? And we're going to go back. It's, it's used similar to Morse code, except... When we have Morse code, um, and I said, okay, display something in Morse code. And if you just, if you said, okay, a lot, a lot of people know dot, 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 space, dash, 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 space, dot, dot, dot. And that was for S-O-S, -S, okay? And one thing about Morse code is a lot of people could understand it, but so could the bad guys. So if we were trying to send a secret code, this wouldn't be um, very secretive. One of the things this does have, it has a term called immediate decodability. Where's spell checker when I need it? I think I need another M in there, don't I? Yeah. This has immediate decodability because if I say dot, 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 space, dash, 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 space, dot, 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 um, you know what it is. It's SOS right away. If I take a look at this and say, if I wanted to send a three-letter message, I'm, I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven characters. So 11 divided by three is 3.6 on average. So one of the good things was Morse code is immediately decodable. Second thing about Morse code is I know what the average character length is going to be. So this guy ends up being something we call average character length. And the final thing is it's not secretive. So what we're going to do today is we're going to come up with a way to make a code that is immediately decodable, boom, that has a really low average character length. You know, and SOS just happens to be 3.6 to display that message. And we want to look at something that is actually secretive so that you need to know the code in order to be able to do the decoding of whatever the message is. So one that we're gonna to start to look at is something called a Huffman code, as I mentioned a moment ago. And as we talked about, the average length of the code, um, we, we'd like it to be shorter than it normally is. You know, we just talked about Morse code. We looked at an example of what was going on there. So in order to do this, we're gonna first start talking about character weight okay when and that's dealing with the frequency and if you remember back most of you had a program with me where you took sonnet 18 and you counted out how many characters there would be um and then you listed the top 11 and we went all the way down and i don't remember exactly what it was but it was something along the lines of i think e was first does that sound correct and then we kept going, T, L, N, and we went all the way down and we had a count for each. Well, what if, you know, I went through and said, well, there was 256 E's, okay? And if I actually counted all of the characters, including spaces, because they take up room, I, I'm, and let's say that I got to 2,418 characters, could I figure out what percent of the time the E came up and why E um, is, is considered the most popular in Morse code and why that deals? Well, yeah, I would take 256 and divide it by 2418 and I would get some kind of percentage, okay, of what that came up. And if I added all of my percentages up, it would come out to be 100%. So somebody clearly took document after document after document and I don't have it with me. And they went through and said, okay, 
if I take a look at Morse code, uh, share screen, um, let's go to here, let's go to here, open a new one, I click Morse code, and I get an image of Morse code, and what am I looking for? This guy. Can you see that? It's not coming up very strong. All right, let me let me slow down. Normally in the classroom, I print this out and hand it to everyone. Now where'd it go? There it is. Okay. So what letter do you think was the most frequent? Well, the answer was E. What's second most frequent? T. And why are these two at the top? Why is E just a single dash and dot and T is a single dash? Well, the reasons are is there are more E's. So if it's just a single dot, then there would be less characters to transmit. That's why T is second. Then you have I, A, N, and M. And a lot of you have watched Wheel of For yeah, Wheel of Fortune. And you know, they say what characters to guess. And you know, they'll go T. N, M, S, R, you know, I think L's in there somewhere pretty high. And then they say, okay, what vowels do you want? And most people go E and A because they're the most popular ones. Okay. All right. So we have these percentages for everything. All right. Well, what we're going to do is dumb it down and we're gonna work with these percentages, but we're gonna say, I'm creating a new language, and in this new language, I only have five letters. And those five letters are A, B, C, D, and E, okay? And I'm saying in the language that I created, E is gonna come up 45% of the time. D is gonna come up 15% of the time. A is 20% of the time and so So I'm gonna have a character weight and that's gonna be based off that frequency. Well, let's take a look at Morse code right now, okay? The A is zero, 01. What do I mean by zero, 01 is I took that binary tree that was dots and dashes and wherever there was a dot, I made it a zero. Wherever there was a dash, I made it a one because welcome to the world of computer science, we're gonna work with zeros and ones. E was that single, zero. Okay. So I can again do this expected character length, sort of like I did last time, but this time I'm going to do it a little more accurately. I'm going to base it on these weights and I'm going to base it on the number of characters that I would have to transmit. So I'm going to say, all right, the A comes up 20% of the time. So I'm going to take 0.2 times 2. B, 0.1 times 4, because there's 4 characters. C, 0.1 times 4, and I'm going to keep going for each one. And now if I do the math, I'm looking at something like 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.45 plus 0.45. Uh, combining these three, I get 1.2. Combine these two, I get 0.9. So my average character length would be 2.1. So if the frequencies hold up like they're supposed to in my five letter language, and I was using the Morse code zeros and ones, my average character length would be 2.1. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to give you a better example and help you understand this. So let's take a look at, if I put this up and I say, oh, this is secret Morse code. And I went 0110010. Can you tell me what that is? Well, is the first one a zero? You know, which um, if I had the Morse code, I know that's an E. Or is the first character zero, 01, which is something on that Morse code table? Or is the first character zero, 011? I don't know. So this guy is not immediately decodable. 
Now, what could I do? Well, I could put spaces in, but if I was to put the spaces in, look how much length I add. A space for extra, one, every character would get one extra. So I'm gonna say, all right, I wanna create my own so that I don't have to put spaces in, but it is in fact this immediate decodability. All right, so I'm gonna go with these letters, B, C, D, A, E. Not sure why I put them out of order, but they are. And I'm gonna say B is 10%, C is 10%. This all adds up to um, a solid one or 100%. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the lowest frequency ones and I know they should be at the lower end of my binary tree, sort of like Morse code. So I'm gonna take the B and I'm gonna take the C Okay, this was point one, this is point one, and I'm gonna combine those to get a point two. Now, why did I take these two? Again, they're the lowest, okay? They're the lowest. So check mark, check mark. Now, this became a single entity of weight point two. So now again, I'm gonna take the two lowest and combine them. Well, I have options because this is a point two, this is a 0.15 and this is a 0.2. So I can either combine this subtree with D or D and A or A and D. Order doesn't matter here. That's part of what makes it harder to decode. What would you like to combine? The D and what? Subtree or A? A. D and A? Okay. Do you want D and A or A and D or don't you really care? It's all good for me. All right. So here's D at 0.15. Here's A at 0.2. I'm going to combine those and I get a 0.35. So now these two are combined. Check and check. All right. Now I have three frequencies, the 0.45, the 0.35, and the 0.2. What do you think I should combine? Well, I have to combine the two lowest, which are here and here, and that's going to give me a 0.55. Finally, I need to bring the E into play, which is my 0.45, and when I combine it with the 0.55, I do in fact get my final one, okay? So I build a tree by combining the smallest ones. Now, I'm going to put in zeros and one. Zero for the left child, zero, zero, zero. One for the right child. Here's a one. Here's a one. Up. Oh, here's a zero again. Here's a one. And here's a one. And what I just created was my code, my Huffman code, to represent each one of these characters. So for example, my B is going to be represented by zero, zero, zero. My C is going to be represented by 001. My D is going to be represented by 010. My A is going to be 011. And finally, my E is going to be just one. So if I gave you a secret message right now, is it immediately decodable? All right, let's see what I have. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one. I just gave you a sequence of zeros and ones. Is it immediately decodable? Yes. Yes, that's a good answer. And what is it? B A. Yeah. Bad Abe. Bad Abe. Bad Abe. Bad yeah. Abe. Okay. Now, what's my average character length? Count count all these up. What do you get? Sixty. 
2.6 for an average. What do you think? 2.6 for my average character length. So what did I do? I created a secret code. It could have been, uh, the person sitting beside me could have a totally different code depending on how they combine things. You know, the A and D could have been switched, the C and B could have been switched, the E could have been way over here and brought up and combined with that. So this could be extremely unique and still be a, a Huffman code. And it would have been, again, depending on how I combined these but I was able to get a top secret message, immediately decodable, average character length 2.6. What do you think about that? Let's do another one. Okay, let's do another one. Oh. Boom. Here I go. I have uh, two, four, six, eight letters right now. And I want to create a Huffman code. Okay. Do I have options of what I can combine first? Or are there two that are cut and dry? You can just do A and B. Again? We, we could just do A and B. A and B? Are, are they the two smallest frequencies? F and G are the smallest. Yeah, F and G. So the first two that I have to combine are these two right here. So I'm going to say F, which is a 0 0.05. I say G, which is a 0 0.05. And when I combine those, I get a 0.1. What could I do next? Well, let's see. Here's a 0.2. Here's a 0.1. That leaves the 0.2 out. I could use B, C, D, no, the combination of F and G, or H. I have a whole lot of options of what I could combine next. And that's what makes this code unique. So what would you like to combine next? Just pick them. Anybody. C and D. C and D, thank you. C is a point 0.1, D is a point 0.1. That's gonna give me a point 0.2. So I took care of C, I took care of D, I took care of F, I took care of G. Okay, these two, I'm making some notes up here. They became a point two. This became a point one. What would you like to combine next? Well, I still have a point one on the table. I have a point one down here. So I have a point one, a point one, and a point one. What would you like to combine next? Bunch of options. Couldn't we combine A and B to get the point three for uh, E? Not yet. Not yet. I don't want. I don't want to go with the higher frequencies yet because I want them to be possibly higher up the chart. So I'm thinking I need to either combine B, which is the point one, um, the F and G, which was a point one. And the H was a point one. So pick two of those. B with F and G. Say again? B with F and G. B with F and G. Okay. I can put it in front or I can put it there, but I'm going to put B with F and G. That's going to give me a point two. Okay. So I took care of B right now. So I have. Um, that, I have a point two here. I have a point two here. I have this point one. So this point one is going to have to get combined with one of my point twos. I can combine it with this. 
I can combine it with this, or I can bring A into play. So H combined with A. A, okay. That, let's bring A into play. There's the point two, and we have H into play, which is a point one, and they join together to give me a point three. Okay, so I just took care of the H and the A. The only thing I have left is E, which is a point three. So now I have a point three, a point three, a point two, and a point two. What needs to be combined? I don't have any options here. I have to combine the point two and the point two. That gives me a point four. So now I have a point three, a point four, and a point three. I'm gonna to have to bring E into play because this is a point three. And I'm gonna combine it here to get my point six. And I'll combine these two to get my one. Okay, so I'm combining the lowest decimals I can. All right, going down the left, zero, zero, zero. Looks like B is gonna be three zeros. Um, this is a one, this is a zero. Looks like F is gonna be zero, zero, one, zero. Zero, zero, one, zero. G is gonna be zero, zero, one, zero. Uh, excuse me, one, one, zero, zero, one, one. It looks like zero, one, zero. C is going to be zero, one, zero. D is going to be zero, one, one. Uh, this is a one, a zero, and a zero. A is going to be one, zero, zero. That's a one, one, zero, one. H is going to be one zero one and finally e is going to be a one one so now i should be able to make a message that's immediately decodable and the character count will be really low hopefully between two and three maybe close to three because we have extra characters gone this time so I need to come up with a, a secret message, okay? One, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, one, one, one. And you should be able to decode that. What's the first letter? H. H. Headache? Headache. Yeah, headache. Except it looks like, how do I spell it? H? What's my next letter? A E. Yeah. Oh, I, I think I spelled it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I was confused. A C H E. It becomes a headache. That's kind of close. Come on, man. Count them all up. How many characters are there? Eight. Eight, okay. How many digits are there? Twenty-two. Twenty-two divided by eight. 
not too shabby. Not too shabby. Now, again, um, immediate decodability, probably way less characters than Morse code, especially when you have to put in spaces. But what do you need to know? You need to know what's the key. How did we come up with the key? We had to take a look at the frequencies and build the chart. You got it? Nobody? So what, what's the practical application of this? Sending secret messages. Is that something you should really be teaching? Uh... <laughs> yep. Yep. Now, what would be easier to send all instead of all these zeros and ones? Well, what if I turn this into hexadecimal? You know, hexadecimal is um, 16. So we're looking at groups of groups of four. So I could turn this into hexadecimal by looking at groups of four. And anybody who took me for, um, oh, I went the wrong direction. I should have been going this way from right to left. You know that uh, we could turn this into hexadecimal and really mess people up. What would, what is 1011 in hexadecimal? No eight or eight, two and one, that's 10, 11. That would be a B. But again, I messed up. I should have started on the right. So we could really make these secretive. Do we need another one or are you good? You know, worse than having your cameras off is having your microphones off. Nobody talks to me. Nobody likes me. One more would be nice. Well, it, it, it makes sense. You got it? Yeah, I, I actually thought that a Huffman originally did this to um to compress text files way back when when they had floppy disk. That's possible. I'd be okay with that too. Yeah, I like when I originally um read up on a Hoffman tree um like two years ago. That's uh -huh. that's what I thought he originally did it for, but um this is actually much cooler, so <laughs> sending secret messages, huh? Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> so you could put you could put hexadecimal messages up and hang them around campus and the government wouldn't know what you're saying unless they had this fellow right here, the whole key. You'd be blowing people's minds. And you're only a sophomore in college. All right, any any more questions about Huffman codes? And yeah, I'm okay with um believing that it was needed for uh Data compression. I'm okay with that. All right. Getting ready to start the next thing. This will blow your minds. Because uh, I get so far and then I give up on it. But now that we're halfway through class, I can do some quick attendance. So give me one second. You'll have to fast forward this if you're re-watching the video. Cash is Mark. Hey, welcome back, Mark. Rashawn Conrad. Victor Ricci. And Long. Welcome back, Long. No Dylan, no Maria. Just as I said, no Dylan. All right, section 15.2. Uh, oh boy. So I don't know if you remember, we had conversation about what if I wanted to build a tree and the idea of searching the binary search tree was supposed to make things really nice. And if I said, okay, I want you to build a tree with the letters, um, I'm trying to come up with something that has unique letters. And let's just say it's this, uh, S, W A T what give me another a. B O G SWAT bogger I, Y SWAT bogey okay 
swap bogey. And I said to you, I want you to build a binary tree. Well, we've gotten pretty good at this. And I know to go wide. And I'd go S, W, A, uh, T, uh, B, O, O, G, G, and finally Y. I get something that looks like that. And I know that I have a certain number of levels, five levels and searching and on and on. But is this ideal to search? So if I said, I'd like to know if the letter such and such is on there, or can I find it? At, you know, if it's less than S and over. So I got this long way of going. And in fact, part of me knows that in order to do this, if my word was actually Y, W, T, S, O, G, B, A, and I said, oh, build a binary tree with this, I'm going Y, and um, let's see, W goes here, and oh crap, T goes here, and S would go here. This is not the most optimal tree to search because it's going all the way down. Well, one of the things that we can do is this AVL concept. Um, AVL is Adelson Velsky Landis. That's our test question. Like on the final exam, there'll be test questions of what name matches with uh, what did they do? And what if this tree more ideally was balanced? Okay, remember we had complete trees. We filled here, 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 and we kept going top down, left to right. That was complete. And we had a balanced tree. Does anybody remember what the definition of a balanced tree was? I'll give you a hint. Negative one, zero, or one. If I took, go ahead, Galen. Uh, so isn't that one like both sides are equal and like branch like like? Give me a little more than sides. The, like the the branches aren't extending past each other. The subtrees. Yeah. The subtrees. Okay. A balance would be when all of my values for subtree, left subtree minus right subtree, is either negative one, zero, or one. Well, if I look at SWAT bogey. I go, okay, what's S? One, two, three, four, minus two. Uh, that has a balance factor of minus two. What's A? Zero, one, two, three. This guy has a balance factor of minus three. And all, you know, these are just, um, this is negative one, this is positive one, and this is zero. The left subtree minus the right subtree. Oh, W is nice. It's a zero. Zero and zero. So I don't like this negative two, and I especially don't like this negative three, because looking at those balance factors, I know that this tree is not balanced. Okay? The balance factors need to be negative one, zero, or one. That's the left subtree subtracted from the right subtree. Well, Adelson Belsky Landis came up with this idea, and I can only imagine they probably had whiteboards and poster boards all over the place uh, in, their, in their man cave or their office cave or wherever they were working to try and figure out a way to, as I build the tree, I did the S, I did the A, I did the W, and so on, that I'd like to keep it balanced. Let's take another look at SWAT bogey. I need to put this in my notes because it's great. So what they were saying is, okay, yeah, we're going to put the S in, and we're all happy. What's its balance factor right now? Zero. Thank you. We're going to put in W. What's S's balance factor? One. Mm. Left side minus right side. Negative one. Yeah, it's negative one. W, okay, so it's still pretty good. If I put in A, 
I'm kind of happy. This is back to zero, this is zero, this is zero. If I now put in T, S, W, T is going to go this way. I'm still good, right? S is one minus negative one at this point. A is zero. W is positive one. T is zero. So far, so good. I add B. Still pretty good. Uh, let's see. You know, and if I'm searching and you look at it, yeah, I should be able to search, you know, um, one, one, two, three, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I have seven characters, I should be able to do it in that log, big O, base two, the uh, daddy, daddy conversation. Okay. Now after B, I want to add O. And as soon as I add O, I get in trouble. Which letter is my problem child? Is it the S? Three minus three minus two is one. Is one. Uh, is it the W? That's one. T is zero. A is uh oh. A is negative two. B is negative one. So I have a problem there with that negative two. Well, here's what Adel Sandelsky said. In order to eliminate this problem with the current situation, what if I do something called a left rotation? They're going to rotate B up and make B the parent to A and O. So their rotation is going to now give me S. We're going to come down to B. A is over here. O is here, uh, W is out here, and T is here. Am I back to a balanced tree? Looking at the balance factors, I think I'm pretty good all across the board. Negative one, zeros, ones, and twos. So they did something called a left rotation. Now, along with the left rotation, there's a right rotation. There's something called a left-right rotation. And finally, there's a right and left notation. Now, these guys probably did some awesome thesis on this because if we kept going, this starts to get really crazy where I'm rotating to the left, I'm rotating to the right. In fact, I get to a certain point where I don't want to spend any more time on trying to figure out what they're doing. I just throw my hands up. But by doing this, I'm building the tree. Adelson Velsky say, oh, we have balance factors. I'm now back to a balanced binary search tree. And I bring in my search time of, what is it for this one? Does anybody know? O sub. Log base two n. Yeah, log base two of n. Because I take uh, the power of two and each one I keep adding a power of two and going down. Okay, so the book has an example. Let's see what's going on with the book's example. All right, so we have all of these letters and they're abbreviations for states, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Georgia, Ohio, Massachusetts, Illinois, Minnesota, Indiana, New York, Vermont, Texas, and Wyoming, okay? And again, I'm looking at some of these examples and what are the balance factors here? And uh, you know, if I went through them, and if you don't understand the idea of the balance factors, then we can't go much farther. Negative one, zero, and one. And let's see, this guy right here, his balance factor should be good, negative one. And if I went through all of these, I'd see, yeah, it's pretty good. It's either negative one, zero, or one. And I'm okay with all of that. All right, normally I have three by five cards for each of these with tape on them. And I go to the front board and I, I reenact all of this, but we're gonna have to do the best we can with paper and pencil, okay? So I'm gonna start. And as you can see, I put Rhode Island, boom, boom. Yeah, we have one done. 
I insert PA. We have two done. I insert Delaware. And now I have a problem. Now, we have left rotations, right rotations. We just saw an example of that a moment ago. We have something called a left-right rotation. And finally, we have a right-left rotation. So there's times where we have to rotate twice. So let's see what we can do with this. I now come in and I have a, -a, -a balance factor of two, one, and zero. So something's gonna have to happen. And in our other example, when we looked at it, when I had a balance factor of negative two, I did a left rotation. So negative two was a left, all right? I don't know if this is a definite pattern or not, but I think sometimes by location, it changes exactly what we're doing. In this example, I have a positive two, so I need to do a right rotation. So what will my new tree look like with the right rotation? Well, here's the two. I'm gonna rotate on PA and get a new tree that is PA, Delaware, Rhode Island. Now I'm back to a balanced tree. Georgia. Less than PA, greater than Delaware. How are my balance factors? We good? And you're only adding uh, plus one to the left side. Yep, so we're good. Agree? All right. Where does Ohio go? Wouldn't it be to the left of Rhode Island? Is... No, 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 no. I've already had students print out the alphabet to make this easier on them. Yeah, wouldn't it be greater than Georgia? So to the right of Georgia? Yeah. And what do I have? Uh-oh. Here's a balance factor of negative two. Here's a balance factor of, excuse me, this was a positive two. My mistake. I have three minus one is two. Here is zero minus, here's a negative two. Here's a negative one and a zero and a zero. Now, eventually, like I said, these are gonna be some kind of pattern. When I get the twos and how I do it, here I had a positive two and we did the right rotation. Now, all of a sudden I have a negative two and I'm gonna to have to do a left rotation. PA, the left rotation says, bring Georgia up and rotate Delaware down. So here's Georgia. Rhode Island is still out here. Delaware now gets rotated down and Ohio stays as the right child of Georgia. So, so somehow, somehow or other, if I start thinking about coding this crazy thing, this guy's left child becomes Georgia. This guy's left child becomes Delaware. But what if this guy already had a left child? And, oh my goodness, it's gonna be some kind of craziness. But early on, these guys probably got excited in the first hour of working on this, because now I'm back to a balanced tree, which is what I need for a binary search tree. So if we were to program this, would we have to, like say we wanted to print, print it in order, right? Yeah. Would we have to add flags to know when the list was rotated? I don't know. You would have to actually rotate the list. So if you were doing, and again, this, we're not going to get into it. We're into the concept of how this happens. Am I asking you to program this? No. What would you program it with? Would you do linked lists or would you do arrays? Remember the last thing we just talked about, we had the concepts of linked lists, but we were actually doing it with arrays with the, 2n plus 1, 2n plus 2 kind of deal, and the locations and how we'd be moving things around. Oh, boy. Again, I'm running through the concepts with you, and uh, 
hopefully you can come up with the, you know, the thought of how to do it without actually programming it because this would take a while. All right. Next thing after we, we just added Ohio, I now want to add Massachusetts. Where would Massachusetts go? Less than Ohio. To the left of Ohio. And I start looking at balance factors and I go, oh crap, because PA is now two. Georgia is negative one, Ohio is one, and the rest of them are zeros. But now look where I have my bad balance. It's way up here at PA, which means some kind of rotation is going to have to end up happening on PA. And does anybody see what it is? Well, PA has to get replaced by the next largest. What's the next largest? Because everything less than it's going to stay over here. Everything greater than it's going to go to the right to balance it out. Would it be a left-right rotation? Yeah. You see this Ohio? Ohio is going to have to get rotated left, and then we're going to have to rotate up. So Ohio is the one that has to come up. So let's see if we can pull this one off. Okay, so I need a left rotation, which means Ohio's gonna go here, okay? Massachusetts, Georgia, and Delaware are gonna have to go somewhere. So what happens is Georgia is gonna be now down here, okay? So if you keep an eye on it, Ohio went up, Georgia went down, Delaware stays here, Ohio's left subtree now has to become Georgia's right subtree. Ohio's left subtree now has to become Georgia's right subtree. Here's PA. Here's Rhode Island. So I did a, a left rotation, okay? A left rotation, which brings Ohio up. And now I need to do a right rotation. So Ohio is going to come up here. PA is greater than, it goes there. Rhode Island goes there. Georgia is the left subtree. So Georgia stays put. We already moved to everything down here. This is a Delaware and this is a Massachusetts. So again, I did a left subtree rotation. And then what happened? Ohio's left tree became Georgia. And what was Ohio's left subtree became Georgia's right. So I did the left rotation moving Ohio around. Now I do a right rotation moving Ohio up. And I'm back to a balance tree. You know, some days I wonder how long it took to figure this stuff out. Well, like I said, this was probably um, Mr. Adelson and Velsky Landis probably spent quite a bit of time on the concepts and all the different possibilities because as we keep going down farther and farther and i do a left and a right and a right and a left and uh, sometimes i struggle even trying to explain it because i get the idea of what's going on sort of shall we keep going with this we have more states i'd be willing to bet we could mess this up so right now I have... I've been hearing so much about states lately. I don't know. <laughs> I have Ohio, Georgia, and PA. I have Rhode Island. Again, this is more fun with three by five cards. Here's Delaware. Here's Massachusetts. 
and we like it and we're kind of happy with it. The next thing I want to add is Illinois. So I have Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, New York, Vermont. Let's see, where does Illinois go? I, I refuse to accept Illinois exists. <laughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, I, J, M, uh, B, C, G, H, I. Uh, I think Illinois is down here. How are my balance factors? You have a negative two. Where? Because you have four on the. No, 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 no. We're counting levels, not, not nodes. So the level to the left is three. The level to the right is two. So Ohio comes out to be a positive one. The levels to the left of Georgia is one. The levels to the right of Georgia is two. Georgia's a negative one. Where does Michigan go? It goes to the right of Massachusetts. Yeah, that's true. Illinois is done, Michigan's done. Where's Indiana go? To the right of Illinois. To the right of Illinois. Do we have trouble now? Yes. What are some of my balance factors? Ohio, one, two, three, four. Uh -oh. Ohio becomes negative two. The number of levels of its left subtree minus the number of levels of its right subtree. Georgia. That would actually be positive too, right? I'm sorry. Thank you, Conrad. I messed up on purpose. See if anybody's paying attention. Georgia is a one and a one, two, three. Georgia is a negative two. Zero, one. Yeah, so I have problems here. Now, if you were watching uh, us do this, it's the same as in the book. I'm going to have to do some rotating. And does anybody think they see it? Would we rotate uh, uh, Massachusetts to the left? Yeah, I'm thinking Massachusetts to the left. And I don't know if it's to the left and then it's to the right. Or can I get away with just rotating Massachusetts to the left? Let's try rotating it to the left. Again, I don't know what the triggers are for left, left, right, right, left, and I didn't care to take the time to do it. So let's rotate Massachusetts to the left. And when I do, Massachusetts left subtree is now gonna become Georgia's right. So Georgia's left subtree is still Delaware, and Georgia's right is now gonna be Illinois, and Indiana. Whoops. All right, so now Massachusetts goes up. Michigan's still here. I have Ohio up here. I have PA to here. And I have Rhode Island to here. Is that the only rotation I needed? Yeah. What's Ohio's balance factor? No, no, this is the uh, Indiana throwing you off still. Yeah, so this is uh this is wrong. It has a balance factor of two. So even though I did the left rotation, I now have to do the right. Okay. When I do the right, Massachusetts is going up. Where will Massachusetts right subtree go? Wouldn't it be to the left of PA? It'll be the left of Ohio, right? Because oh. Massachusetts is going up. So Massachusetts is going up. Boom. We have Georgia. Um, coming down, we have Delaware. We have Illinois. We have Indiana. 
going down the right from Massachusetts now, because it went up, going down the right is going to be Ohio. We know PA is to the right of that. We know Rhode Island is to the right of that. Where did this guy's right subtree attach? Going to attach to the parent node that got rotated down. And I'm going to put it here. And if I think about it, it should now be correct. And I think all of my balance factors are pretty good. <laughs> so here we had a negative two and a two. We had to do, get Massachusetts up because the negative two means this side was bigger. I had to get him up. Once I got him up there, I still was off with the two, which means this side was bigger. So I had to rotate around. So is it some pattern with negative two, go left, positive two, go right. But we're now back to a balanced tree. And again, I could add New York, I could add Vermont, I could add Texas and Wyoming. I don't know if I'd have to do it again, but it is definitely possible. Questions? All right, so. I'm going to give you an example and I want you to build a balanced tree using adelson belsky landis concept. All right, so do you want numbers or states? Numbers. Why numbers? Because I have to go through the whole alphabet in my head to figure out which letter comes first. <laughs> Okay, here we go. I'm going to give some numbers. 14, 16, 4, 6, 8, um, 17, 9, 5. No prep work done by me. Do you want to try this in groups or do you want to stay together? Stay together. Stay together. The more we stick together. All right, I'm going to let you get started on it, see how far you can get. Maria, did you show up today? Well, we almost had perfect attendance. With only six classes left. Yeah. So I'm guessing on the test, you don't want me to give you letters of the alphabet or names. You want something easy. Dylan, yes, I did catch, Dylan, I caught you, um, the first section we covered was Huffman codes, and then the second section is what we're doing here with AVL, so you'll have to rewatch the video to get Huffman codes. Okay, thank you. Six. Eight. I think I just ran into my first problem, didn't I? What's the balance factor of 14? Two. Two. Balance factor of four? Negative two. Negative two. So earlier when we saw some examples of this, we were like, oh, we have to do a left and then a right. Well, I, I don't know. We're going to have to see. Um, we're going to have to do the left to start and then probably recheck balance factors to see if then if, because it's a positive two, I, if it's still a positive two, I'd have to do a right. 
But right now I'm thinking that I have 14. I'm doing the right on six. Oddly enough, I think that's the only one you really have to do. I didn't pick good numbers. Because no, when I did it out, the, the, the left side only, wait. Wait, this 17, you see the 17? That's supposed to be a 10. So now that I'm here, I need to add a 10. Sorry, Gail, remember I just made these up. I need to add 10. Boy, it seems like all of our problems keep ending up in the same area, but. I'm going to do a left on the eight. Why? Because this is a uh, negative two. This is a, hmm. Again, you know, what's the pattern here? This one's a little different because here's the negative two. Here's a negative one. Unless something happens, I, I, again, what's, what is, I, I don't know, Adelson Velsky there, Landis, they were geniuses. This guy's a negative one. But for some reason, even though that's a negative two, I have to come here, which is next to the last one that I entered, and do the rotation. So what do I rotate? I think you're gonna have to do one of those left to right again. Left to right again? Yeah. Because you wanna to try to get the 10 up. So I have 14. This now becomes eight. So I'm rotating on the eight. This is a six. This is a two. This is a 10. It's the right child. If there was a left child before eight, where would that have to go? If there was a left child here, where does that connect? It would have to go to the parent node's right. So this left would have to go to the parent node's right. It would have to go down here. So I rotate it on the eight. The right child tags along. There is no left child to move down. So as I said, I think if they, if when they did this, they had a room full of situations. And that's just for the concept. And, uh, and now what was a negative two up here, which was wrong, it should have been a positive two, right? Three minus one, yeah. Dylan didn't, or uh, Conrad didn't correct me. Now I need to do a right. So eight comes up to the top. I actually saw that negative two and saw that it should be positive. Oh uh, yeah? I was just waiting for you to finish. All uh, right. Rolling there. <laughs> so this eight rotates up. Where does H right child go? The parents left. When I rotate up, the right goes to the parents left. So I rotate the eight up, 14 comes down, which was the parent, and H right goes to here. So this is 10, this is 16, this is six, and this is two. And my next numbers are nine, which actually ends up um, down here, which has no real effect. And my last number is five, which is going to go here, which again, I think my balance factors are still pretty good.
Wait, the right. balance factor on that six is positive two, right? You are correct. You are correct. So what would I do here? Wait, why would it, why would it be positive two? Because it's left tree. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's I a see. two and a tree. So this is a two, which means, oh, crap. We still need to do one more rotation. What would that rotation be? Probably a left or right in order to get the five or the six is. A left moves the two over, and then a right moves the six down. I think you're exactly right. Yeah. A left would move the five over. So the five would be here and the two would be here and then a right. So that would now be five, two and six and everybody would be happy. I'm out of paper, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah, page 849 in the book has the four different cases. Right. But, but that's working with what they gave us. I'm wondering if there's more to it, the bigger the tree gets or if what we have is enough. I think as long as you only insert one at a time and make sure that it's balanced, those are the four that you get. Right. I, and I would agree with that. But like I said, I'm not – a concept is cool, how it works and how it balances. But for us to take more class time to go deeper into it or to program with it would start to make it crazy. But this whole balance factor and – getting a balanced tree by doing these rotations, I think is pretty cool. Programming this, I, I would honestly have no idea where it even start. <laughs> this is where you say, I'm the mathematician. I explained it to you. Now you have to figure out how to do it. I mean, well, how would you do it? You just have to continue to look at one example after another and just keep testing them and testing them until you could come up with it. Well, not only that, but I mean, you'd have to continuously like check for the array every time you add something, wouldn't you? Early on, yeah, yep, to make sure it all worked. Because you and I'm thinking there's some kind of recursion that would go on here, because uh, it, it, yeah, it has to be unless you yeah. do a loop with the length of the array, which would just get really complicated very quickly. Sure, sure. 